I think we can get started. So hello everybody and welcome to this session about the core components. Uh, I hope you enjoy the conference so far as I do. Uh, so I'm Jean-Christophe Kautzmann. Uh, I work at Adobe in Basel, Switzerland. I work for the Adobe Sites team and I'm part of the development team uh, that uh, developed the core components. So first, I would like uh, to go through the latest features that were released over the last 12 months. So first one is the link handling. Um, so this was a contribution by the community, by uh, Stefan Seifert, uh, to not name him. And this enables uh, a consistent behavior of the link handling across all components, because now all components who use uh, links, who have links, download, and so on, uh, behave the same. Uh, we also added support for the dynamic media. Um, uh, so this is a feature that uh, is available a long time in AEM. And now it's also supported in the image component. So once it's enabled in AEM, uh, you can use all the fancy stuff from the dynamic media, like uh, image modifiers, image presets, smart crops, and so on. Um, we also added uh, support for progressive web app uh, to the page component. So again, this is a feature that's available in AEM and that's now part of the page components and just by uh, enabling it in the page dialog. Uh, we also had a few accessibility improvements to make uh, the websites and the core components more usable for impaired users. Uh, we added uh, what we call the featured image. Um, this is actually uh, an image that uh, is defined at page level um, and that can be used uh, in the image and the teaser components. I will uh, show you this a little uh, in more details afterwards. We added uh, support for uh, the new version of the data layer, which is now 2.0.2. And we added a, a small feature, uh, which we, we call the, the brand slug uh, for the, the page uh, component. It's basically a property of the page uh, that uh, can be defined at a root and that can be inherited for the, the page below the descendant pages. So for example, if you, have, uh, you want to have the brand of your company, uh, and not repeat it uh, for each page, then you define it at a certain level and then it, it uh, can get inherited for the page below. Uh, so I'd like to uh, focus now a bit more on the new link handler. So again, that was contributed by Stefan. Thank you, Stefan, by the way, again. Uh, so it provides a very simple API, a link API, uh, that enables uh, to uh, check the link validity. Uh, there are a few ways uh, to retrieve the URL. The simplest way is the get URL method that gives you a sanitized uh, path uh, with the context path uh, appended. You can also uh, use uh, the get mapped URL, which then uh, also is based on sling mappings and finally, you can also get the externalized URL. So that's the, the full uh, URL with the, uh, the protocol, the domain, and uh, the path and the extension. Uh, you can also retrieve the HTML attributes. Um, uh, this is uh, handy when uh, using in the page template. Uh, I mean, in the component template to get uh, the HTML attributes in one go. Uh, so HTML attributes are typically the href, um, the, the link title, uh, uh, so accessibility, label, and so on. And you can also retrieve a reference of the link. Uh, so the reference object that was used to create the link so typically that's the, the page object, but 
could be also like uh, an asset if you're linked to an asset. So um, the link handler API is uh, is handy also to be used in a model uh, of your custom components. Uh, this can be adapted from the request, and then uh, this enables you to retrieve um, the link based on uh, different uh, arguments. So the simplest uh, way is to um, pass the resource, uh, resource that holds the property of the, the, the linked path. You can also retrieve it by passing the resource and the property name if you if you have a different property name uh, for to, to store the, the URL, you can uh, pass the page to retrieve the link, and then you can pass link URL, target, the accessibility, accessibility label, and the title attribute uh, to create the link. And this will give you uh, the link API back. Now, I would say this covers uh, a lot of use cases uh, with the default um, uh, the default implementation that we have in the core components. But um, there might be use cases where you need to customize the way uh, the, the path and the URL, the link is processed. And uh, this is uh, possible by using the path processor, um, by implementing the interface giving it a higher OSGI rank so that it gets applied instead of the default implementation. And, um, and then you would overwrite uh, the method, uh, the three me methods used to retrieve uh, the URL. So that's the sanitize, the map, and the externalize method, which, as I described be before, uh, will give you a different processing based on your use case, uh, how to uh, manage the, the link handling. Of course, you can also customize the HTML attributes uh, by overriding the, by implementing the process HTML attributes uh, method. Um, for example, if you want to declare that all the links uh, have the target attribute blank, for example, or yeah, or depending on the use case of your business. Uh, what is currently in the making uh, for the core components? So as I described before, we have the featured image at page level, and we make uh, the image and the teaser component inherit from this image. So by default, when you drag and drop an image component and you have defined an image for the page, then the image uh, will be rendered on the page. Uh, so we'll uh, demo this a little later. Uh, we have extended the list component. Uh, there is now an option to render the page items as teasers. And because the teasers now um, use or inherit uh, from the uh, page image, um, you, you get actually a representation of the page items uh, stizzle with uh, the current page um, or the, the linked page. So we are working also, uh, we have modernized the uh, and simplified the image markup. We use the source set attribute. Um, as you can see in the screenshots, this enables you to define multiple images uh, depending on the width of the screen. So here you can see that I have uh, uh, three images and depending on the width, uh, one for uh, 100 pixel or less, one for 200 pixel, one for 500. And um, we also don't use anymore the uh, customers or the specific JavaScript that we had uh, for the lazy loading. We now use the, the browser uh, out of the box um, uh, lazy loading. We use um, the attribute loading equals lazy in the image component. 
Uh, we have improved uh, SEO capability uh, for the page components. So we have three new methods that helps in this regard. So first one is, uh, uh, is to get the canonical uh, link of the page. Uh, the other, the next one is the you can get the alternative languages of the page, and finally the robots tags enables to get the robot uh, meta tags of the page. So this is based on uh, SEO capability that is now available in AEM. Um, so again, we have more, uh, we're well, doing more improvements uh, on the accessibility uh, of the markup of our components. And uh, because we intend to release a new version of the comp components with new versions of a few components, we are taking this opportunity to uh, improve and streamline the HTML, the JSON, the data layer JSON, the dialogues, and so on. So um, we uh, intend to release uh, version 3.0 uh, in coming weeks with new versions for the page, image, teaser, and list components. We intend also to optimize the page and image HTTP cache control headers to improve the page performance. Um, and we are... Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me, we are planning to uh, come up with uh, new components, uh, with a table of content component to list uh, the, um, the, 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 the main titles of the page, the main section, chapters of the page. Um, so work has already begun on this one. Uh, so Next one is the model component, which um, is planned also. And we intend to replace the uh, current grid component, which is now a bit old. And we need some uh, to be modernized and so that uh, we can use the latest features of uh, the CSS grid. Uh, so again, this uh, the core components is an open source project hosted on GitHub. Um, we intend to move our discussions from currently a Google mailing list to the discussions feature on GitHub. And uh, we have a few wikis where you can get uh, more information about the roadmap, um, uh, the dev guide, the style guide that we use. OK, so now time for a little demo about some of the features um, that I uh, went through now. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So for this, I'm using the component library of the uh, core components, which is also uh, available online. Um, I'm using the latest uh, version of the development branch of the core components for this. And I will show you now. Uh, I have accessed this image page and I will uh, now open the, the dialog of uh, the page. And here, this uh, you can see the images tab has now a new section called the featured image where you can define uh, an image for the page. So I will now go pick uh, the high core in Yosemite. Um, so I can uh, also uh, decide to inherit uh, the alternative text from the asset. So I will save uh, the properties and um, let's Taking a few seconds and nothing happens because uh, this is not used uh, yet on the page. Uh, but now if I drag and drop uh, an image component to the page, uh, my image component will inherit the page uh, image. Um, 
So I will show you now the dialog of the image component, uh, which has the asset tab a bit enhanced compared to the previous version. So you see that by default, it inherits um, from the page. I can, of course, uncheck, and then I have I can drag and drop here. I can browse for a file to upload. Uh, I can pick from uh, from them as you know it. Um, I can decide to not inherit from the page. And the alternative text, I can define my own. I will uh, leave it like that for now. Uh, what I would like to show you now is also that, uh, as you might know, uh, it's possible to link uh, an image. So here I will uh, go to a page. Um, <clears throat> so I will go to, uh, let's say, I pick the teaser page, which also has um, a page image defined for it. This is uh, already done. And if I go now in the asset tab, you can see that my image changed. So it's inheriting from the page that is now linked uh, in the image component. So I click done, um, this image appears on my page. So this uh, works very similarly for the TISO components. If I drag and drop uh, TISO components, so I get the same behavior as what I showed you with the image component. Um, so you see that the actually asset tab looks the same. And yes, it's the same as the image component. Um, here, if I would link to a page that would I would have the same behavior as I showed you earlier with the image component. And let's say I want now to define a call to action. I want to, uh, so I will go and link um, my call to action to a specific page. So let's say I take now the title, which also has a page image defined, a different one. So let's see now. You can see that it looks different. So it's taking now the, the, the image from the call to action. Um, so if I click that. So just to recap, um, the teaser either can inherit from the current page if nothing, no link is defined from the link uh, page if one is defined, or from the call to action. Um, OK, we have a few minutes. I can still show you uh, another uh, feature, what I described before, just uh, going through opening the progressive web app uh, tab of the page dialog. And you can see here that you can enable the progressive web app feature. You have a few configuration to set up. Uh, I won't go into details. There is enough documentation on this. And I would like to actually finish the demo with showing you the, the branding, uh, the brand slug uh, feature that I mentioned earlier here. For a page, you can decide to override or to, if not, it will inherit from the root page, the brand slug here. I just uh, pick override, I set Adobe as my brand name. So I save, close. And so you can see at the top, at the tab of the browser, that um, uh, my Adobe brand is now appended to the title. OK, that would be my demo. And now, Let's go to some Q&A. OK, I have a question here. Question from Daniel. A lot of methods shown are unabated with at nullable. Why not use the optional class instead? Emo, the benefits would be avoiding NPEs and forcing API, API users to do a check with if present or is empty. Yeah, that's correct. Um, yeah, we actually use both. 
and uh, we use actually now more and more the optional also yeah because it's easier to write and uh, yeah avoids uh, null pointer exception so a question from Garrett when is it possible to use the link handler in custom components uh, which versions um, so the link handler is actually already available uh, in current version of the core components. So which is, I believe it's 2.17.4. Uh, uh, so you might be able now to already use it. This is already released. Okay, now I have another question here. Is the latest release compatible with AEM 6564? Yes, so we are still uh, supporting 64, 65, and uh, AEM as a cloud service with our uh, releases of the core components. I don't see any more questions. So, well, I thank you for your attention. Hope uh, you enjoyed this presentation. And um, I can only recommend that you watch the next session from my uh, colleague Vlad about uh, quick site creation. Have a nice uh, conference. Enjoy. Have a nice day. Bye.